Today's video is about history being all around us. I live in Stone Market, I live at one end of town and I work at the opposite end of town. So what I'm going to do is just walk to work and I'll talk you through some of the history that I pass every time I go to work. So come with me. Hi, if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit the little red subscribe button and if you like the video give us a thumbs up that will really help us. Let's get on with the video. Just come on to Dean's Court Avenue and this is the first bit of history. Um, why is it called Dean's Court Avenue? And just round the corner we've got Dean's Close and uh, let me show you a couple of things on the old map about this area. So I'm just at this junction here with Dean's Court Avenue, Millfield Avenue and Dean's Close on this corner here uh, looking at why they're called Dean's Close and Dean's Court Avenue. We time travel back a little bit to the 1800s, so I'm still kind of round here somewhere. Dane's Close kind of follows this old footpath. Um, if we go back to Fimber Road here, <coughs> and then back to the 1800s, follow Fimber Road down a little bit, you can see that there was a big house called Danecroft Villa. And also Danecroft Cottage. Now Danecroft Villa has long gone and been replaced by the houses on Fembra Road. But Danecroft Cottage is actually still there. It's very hidden away, but it is actually still there. We know from history that uh, the Danes, the Viking invaders, the Danes did come to Stowe Market. And so I reckon these place names are indicating the area where the Danes probably settled. Uh, at the same time, the Saxons were over at Hawley and there was a great battle between the Saxons and the Danes. And of course we know the, um, the Danes came and killed the East Anglian king, St Edmund, and uh, that's what Bury St Edmunds is named after now. So Danes Close, Danes Court Avenue, uh, that's what that refers to, that the Danes were once here in Stowe Market. And just down the road you've got the village of Rattlesden. It used to be called Rattles Dane or Rates Dane, now produce Rattlesden. So I'm now on Viking Road, which is another indication about the Danes being here. The Vikings and the Danes, they were here, 870. Yeah, it's great. What you want is a circular saw when you're trying to record. So at the end of Viking Road I come to Kiln Cottages uh, and then the Brickfield is this street that bends down with houses on. Why is it called the Brickfields and are they called Kiln Cottages? I'll tell you, let's time travel back. So I'm round here at the end of Viking Road, uh, at the junction with Brickfields and Kiln Cottages. Why, they, why is it called the Brickfields? Well, if we time travel back to 1880, we can see that this area where the Brickfields has been built is actually on the site of the old brickworks. And the old brickworks almost certainly had a brick kiln. So those two street names are telling us something about the past of that area. As the car park, could this be historical? Well, yes, it could, because this used to be the cricket ground, and uh, in the winter the football ground. Let's show you on the old map. So here we are 
Astor in the center of town and Astor Car Park. And if we time travel back to 1880 or the 1880 map, you can see that that area was known as the cricket ground. It was used as the football ground in winter and the cricket ground in summer. And there is a little kind of hint of that on a street name. Uh, we go back to today's map. It's one of these, I think it's this one here, this little uh, building development here is called Cricket Meadow. come to this little triangle of grass that's known as camping lands and it has absolutely nothing to do with camping under canvas and living out in the open doors it's not that sort of camping camping was a medieval football game played in England it appears to have been popular in both Norfolk and Suffolk of all the traditional forms of football played in Europe it appears to have been one of the most toughest and most dangerous the custom in medieval times was to play games after church services and often camping fields were sited near the church. It was recorded that a match at Dis in the early 19th century was so brutal that nine men were killed or died of their injuries. The camping land was provided by Abbots Hall. Although it looks like a small triangle, it was originally actually the size of a football pitch. If we look on the old 1880 map, you can see roughly where the camping land extended up to Abbots Hall. I found out some of this information about camping being an ancient sport on a history walk led by Steve Williams. And if you ever get the chance to go on a history walk with Steve, I would highly recommend it. Of course, the main high street in Stowe Market probably has a thousand history stories or more, which we don't have time for in this video, but I'm going to press on up to where I work at Red Gables because there's a bit more history there. Just coming up to Red Gables now, and this is where I work. And uh, this building I work in has got a whole history itself, which we'll come to in a minute. So I run a charity here, which I founded in 1994, and among other things, been helping the people of Rwanda uh, recover their country after genocide and war. Red Gables is a beautiful old grand house that is now home to several charities based in Stowmarket. Red Gables first started life as Woodfield and was built for a Mr Eustace Prentice in the late 1850s. Eustace Prentice was one of the large Prentice family that was involved with the industrial expansion of the town throughout the 19th century. During the First World War it was owned by a Mrs Storey and was known as Lockington House from the early 1900s. The original grounds were extensive, stretching from the current position of Temple Road, bordering the Ipswich Road, down to the river at Bolters Bridge and Woodfield Lane. By 1925 it had become Red Gables, and in the ownership of Mrs Savory. In 1937, Octavius Seaman, the local building contractors, bought the estate, in 1939, Octavius built a library for the town in the grounds of Red Gables to commemorate his daughter Phyllis's 21st birthday. Red Gables is home to lots of different charities that serve the community and do various things, including our own RSVP Trust. Hi, thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up and hit the like button on YouTube and hit the subscribe button, the little red button uh, below. And I'll see you in the next video.
Thank you.